the difference between the previous era of folk culture and the new popular pop culture are quite stark. And the folk culture of the mid-19th century, for example, families who enjoyed music would create their own music by playing together on the front porch, many times with homemade instruments. Occasionally, they would be joined by their neighbors who were often extended relatives. Contrast that with a teenager now who listens privately to his MP3 player, subtly shutting out the rest of the world around him. Folk culture was all about accountability, community resourcefulness, and creativity. Pop culture is all about liberation, autonomy, spending aimlessly, and consumerism. Again, we're just a bunch of consumer whores, folks. We're promiscuous as all get out. While some may seek to defend pop culture and look for its virtues, it is clear that whenever you exchange one type of culture for another, certain things are gained, other things are lost. Convenience is perhaps the chief gain of pop culture. You no longer have to work together as a family, a local community to grow, can store your annual food supply. You just go to the national superstores down the road, buy your garlic from China, your grapes from Chile, your coffee from Colombia. This is a tremendous time savings and can certainly be understood as being a gain in many ways. But there's a great loss in this way of life as well. We've become far more dependent on impersonal, non-relational industries to supply our every need, and far less on personal relationships, especially on those within our own extended family. So much of pop culture disconnects us from relationships. We turn on and we tune out. Television, the Internet, and much of the entertainment industry is created to make us passive consumers, silently absorbing hours upon hours of often meaningless information, quote, unquote, that is usually in, in, in and of itself rather than equipping us with the means to a greater goal and purpose. And that's what I talk about with the media having civic responsibility. They don't equip us with the means to some greater goal or purpose. Multiculturally. We hear a lot about multiculturalism in these days, especially in the government schools, but I personally observe very little of it. I think a lot of people, particularly those in the political power, regardless of party affiliation, are afraid of truly multicultural society. A truly multicultural society cannot be controlled and manipulated. Therefore, mandatory groupthink has been the goal of many top heavy governments over the past hundred years. Group think, hello, if you don't have distinct differences in cultures within your nation, then you're a monolithic culture, not a true multiculture. The only way to truly preserve a culture, which is the accumulative sum of the beliefs and values of a people or group, externally expressed through their art, music, literature, food, dress, religious practices. Oh, I like that. What a great definition. I'm going to read this again. If you do not have distinct differences in culture within your nation, then you are monolithic culture, not a multi-culture. The only way to truly preserve a culture, which is by definition, is an accumulative sum of beliefs, values of a people or a group, externally expressed through their art, music, literature, food, dress, religious, and practice. It is maintained to an interconnectedness which usually includes a certain level of interdependence and to maintain a mechanism for passing on shared beliefs, values, and customs of that culture. Homeschooling is the premier way for any kind of folk culture to preserve its own unique identity while slowly embracing the universal, enduring values of the larger whole of the country. Regardless of your religion or cultural values, you cannot expect children who are born a generation or two after you to embrace your values if they're cut from the same familiar roots. I believe the castration of unique family heritages and values is being systematically carried out through standardized compulsory education and is reinforced at nearly every point through pop culture's homogenized worldview. This worldview is what we're all expected to accept, that we're merely workers and consumers in a great society, and that we must trust the experts, for they know better. They are out for our best interests, aren't they, folks? To lead us, to teach us, to direct our futures. And in closing, what's the big deal? To some, none of this is important. 
If the values of the current popular trends have already become your own, then who cares about